Hello, hello. Welcome to Heart of the Tribe. My name is Shell Wagner. I'm so glad you came to join us today. Today, Tammy Sorensen and I are going to be finishing up our seven part series on the frequency of healing sound is found in the tuning forks. And I can tell that my internet's a little spotty today. So if you're able to catch this, pray that our internet comes through nice and strong. And with that, I'm going to welcome Tammy. Hey, shalom to everyone. <laughs> shalom. Good to have you again. Wow, we've made it to part seven today. We've made it to part seven and we've covered a lot of ground that enlarged even what we were originally going to do. And that's kind of how I'm going to uh, wind down this last part, including enlarging a teaser for maybe something going forward. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. That sounds great. This has been just a, a, a fantastic a series. It has, I know it has personally blessed my life. I have, you know, come up higher because of it. I've uh, gotten a different perspective on some things, which I needed. I've gotten some growth in my own personal walk with Yeshua. And I'm grateful for that. And I want to say thank you, Tammy, for all the hard work that you put into this. You are more than welcome. I will, I will say the same thing that as you search out his mysteries, and follow Holy Spirit's leading, there's always new things to be learned that empower us to walk with higher thoughts and his yeah. higher ways. And a lot of it we don't understand, but we know he is good and he is leading the way. And that's the whole point. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you just let me know when you're ready for me to get started with your, add your PowerPoint in and we'll, we'll get started today. We will pull up the first one and I will, I just want to recap. Um, there's so many supernatural phenomenal things. And I do believe we can expect a lot of that on the path ahead. Um, this was a turquoise orb in the backyard that was not taken through glass uh, not my camera lens or any of those things, just in a very strategic um, sound therapy session where I was doing voice bios. Um, I've just really been so blessed to see so many new voice bio clients. And what I'm going to share today is going to uh, bring a whole other piece to that. I've been uh, in a quantum biology class. I've been in a new music as medicine class. I'm always, I'm a teacher, so I'm always learning. And uh, this little piece here is strategic to some of the things I'm going to talk about. So I wanted to uh, open up with this, the sound and the color and the, the supernatural, and that is a color of healing in the spirit realm as Holy Spirit. It's a color in the voice bio and um, it's a color um, that is just very important to uh, connecting with presence and Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus, the body of Jesus who that purchased healing. And so that is why I opened up with this because he is just so amazing. Yeah. Uh, two things that came at me in since we last met came through the telegram and through another person who reached out about this energy enhance, enhancement system technology. And I put a link in there. Um, this video kind of shares a lot. It's a validation of what Dr. Monzo does, his AP, ATB body system, everything that's going on with well-being by design and the various therapies being offered and included there. Um, they talk a lot about sound therapy, color therapy, coherence, the Schumann resonance, Fibonacci, etc. It's all unpacked from a different view, a different angle, and confirms the major thrust of my voice bio sessions. And it was kind of interesting to hear from yet another perspective with confirmation, the revelation that Yah is releasing in this now time for us to focus on, to walk in holistic health and restoration. However, this system is extremely cost prohibitive. I know that Kim addressed that on Telegram and she has more information coming. So I just wanted to make it because it came at me in more than one direction. I felt I should mention it all as always search things out and confirm it with the word with Holy Spirit 
but I think there's more information on this coming to be available uh, when Kim gets back to us. Great. So music is medicine. So interesting. I ended up jumping on board with this because of my quantum biology class. I'm learning so many fascinating things about the cellular level. We talked a lot about um, making sure we are connected with the sun as it rises and in, during the day and not be covered in sunscreen and at sunset that those are all important to health and the grounding and all those things. But I was introduced to a, a gentleman, John Stuart Reed, who is uh, kind of the now person of cymatics. And we didn't play the cymatics video for this seven part series because Dr. Monzo already had when we got together. Nice. But cymatics is so fascinating and they've gotten it down to the cellular molecular level of some very fascinating things. And of course, you go into science, you have to deal with the fact that they admit that um, Scripture is one of, but they don't ever admit it is the above all others. Right. There was some fascinating research that I wanted to point out that's come out in the past 10 years on music being used as medicine. And they're kind of saying that it is becoming so profound, the research that is coming out and some of the grants that are being given, that it is actually in position to become uh, more prevalent than pharmacology at right at this point because it's a natural alternative and they they address how a lot of the doctors now are 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 trained to give you a pill and the pills do work but they just put band-aids on the root of the issue mm -hmm. and this research is showing to get behind all of that and down to the cellular, the root level. So one of the fascinating things that I, in one of the modules was, science is discovering that the universe was actually created by sound. Oh my gosh, let there be light. Let there be. I mean, they even read from John 1.1. 1, 1. Wow. And of course they go into other cultures and blah, blah, blah. And of course this happens after the Big Bang, but we know differently. We know that the Lord is allowing science to confirm that his voice, him as the word, created yes. everything Yes, from the beginning, and it was good. Yes. So I was just so thrilled to hear them say that, and he read John 1 1. Okay. That's fabulous. Beginning. That was fabulous. And one of the things that they shared in both my quantum biology and the music as medicine, they are doing much research with music and frequencies at the cellular level with blood. And they do blood, they talked about blood banks and how blood banks, like after four weeks, you have to dis um, you have to discard it because it is no longer living. And wow. most of their research involves blood that is like two days old or whatnot. But they have figured out under a microscope that they can feed cells that have been in a blood bank, the frequencies, different frequencies, and the blood will turn red again. Wow. It is a wow. Wow. And it is fascinating. Um, I don't know. I don't want to get out of... Um, text here, but one of the things that are fascinating about this is that when you feed water frequencies, you get all these beautiful, amazing shapes and whatnot, but it goes away the minute you stop feeding the water the frequency. When you feed blood that frequency, the pattern is imprinted in the blood on the cell. Wow. That, that, it, the verse that just keeps coming you know, to mind is, is the life is in the blood. It is. It yeah. is. So I just thought this would be such a fascinating thing to uh, introduce everybody to, or to encourage everybody to search out because it is cutting edge. It's newer and it is the direction that it would make so much sense that this is, I mean, they go into so many things about how when the earth was created, remember the deep, 
all the different things. There was so much of scripture confirmed in this. I was just in awe of Yah and and the word Yeshua and just how fascinating this many years later, all of it's coming out to confirm everything on a whole new uh, area, music as medicine. So one of the things they pointed out was that low resonating frequencies from any music that you interpret or deem or listen to or hear as beautiful has the potential to heal at the cellular level. Huh. And they said, do not use the Bluetooth. It's quality speakers. It's quality mm -hmm. headphones. But they named all kinds of instruments like the keyboard, like the drum, like the harp. All yes. these instruments that have the lower resonating frequencies from any music that you deem as beautiful. And so much of the instrumental music is that way where you're not distracted by words. Yes. And it is, they're proving in the research that it is bringing healing. And I'm going, wow, Lord, when we enter into your presence with this quantum fact that you have made available to us, the sky's the limit. Yeah. Yeah, that's fascinating. Very fascinating. So I did highlight quality headphones or speakers, not the Bluetooth thing, not the earbud thing, even the earbuds that you plug in, not the same. And one of the reasons this is able to work is it's able to stimulate the vagus nerve, which is the longest nerve in your body. And it has the capacity to restore the cyto cytosine balance which leads to a reduction in chronic inflammation in the body. And we all know that inflammation is one of the reasons we wrestle with dis-ease. Now, can I ask you a quick question on this? Because I've been really trying to bring this stimulation of the vagus nerve since you, since you brought it up. And, um, and Kim uh, at Dr. Monzo's office had also emphasized to me how important this was. Yes. And I've really been practicing myself. So what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that like I'm vibrating. It's like I'm, I'm releasing sound and really vibrating those deep throat muscles to where I can feel it all the way down in my chest. Yes. That vibration. And that is correct, right? That is correct. And one of the things that you really should do, one of the most um, optimal ways to do that is with your own voice, but do the full octave range. All the way down to the guttural. And I okay. just practice that. <laughs> yeah. They have okay. fascinating new agey kinds of examples out there where they're making um, mantra sounds, which I don't do. And, right. but whale sounds, those kinds of things with the pads and the strings, it is beautiful and it is very vagus nerve stimulating. And your voice is integral to that. They do have vagus nerve stimulating instruments now, but you really need to make sure that it is like internalizing and not an external thing. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I know what I was doing was the do, re, me, but I love what you just showed with that full, full octave. Yeah, that, that is really cool. and go low and start low and go high because that nerve extends all the way. And what it does is it activates, you know, you have uh, hairs, fibers on your cell nerves and, and there's cytosine balance that happens in activating all that, which helps to lead to a reduction in chronic inflammation, improve the immune system function, reduce cortisol and stress hormones so that you, you are free to create in a new way. I mean, it's just fascinating and I'm just getting started. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what Kim was reminding me of is just the stress reduction property. And the fact that Yah, you know, has provided for this. I don't have to go take a pill. I don't have to, you know, buy anything. I mean, he has put this 
ability within each of us as his creation to be able to do this and and reduce inflammation and reduce stress in our lives that it's fantastic absolutely i i know of i don't know if you know of ray hughes but he's a wonderful music bible historian the songwriter he's a minstrel and he's done so much amazing biblical research on the uh the davidic worship and different things but he was battling some lung things and the doctor told him that the best thing he can do for his own healing for his own longevity is to sing wow wow that was a medical doctor that told him that yeah that's incredible Mm -hmm. So, yes, I want to say that the there this is limitless because everything about the kingdom that Yeshua has made available, that Yah set in place in the quantum realm and the quantum laws and all those things, it's infinite, it's eternal, and he's trying to get us to wake up and don't just give it over to people who are going to say it's just science, say it's just new age. No, it belongs in the kingdom. Let's start searching it out. This all gives credence to how the energy pathways, I mean, it goes into so many things that Dr. Monzo talks about. So anyway, I just wanted to point out those highlights of that module of what I've been learning. Yeah. Um, I want to add to that the cymatics research and music as medicine, that for all nerves in the body, the primary, me primary method of sending signals is by sound rather than electricity. Fascinating new discovery. Wow. That it's the sound and the sound, you can get into the intimate, intricate details of this, but the sound produced on the cellular level causes the molecules to start bumping into each other, which actually then creates the electricity with all the pathways that we work with. Right, right. So the nerves do have electricity, but it's created by sound first. Then is electricity, which then travels to the brain to be interpreted. Wow. Sound gives birth to light. They talk all about that sound has to be coming before light, which gave credence to the John 1, 1, that they were yeah. saying the, the voice that Yah used, the word, the let there be, he did that before he said, let there be light. It's so profound. It really, it really is. I've always, you know, believed that, that Yah sang everything into existence, that he literally sang it. You know, I think it's in, is it in Zephaniah when he talks about how he sings over us? Yes, Zephaniah 317, one of my favorite one, verses. One of my favorites too. <laughs> and yeah, and right in that same, uh, I think it's Zephaniah 39, where he talks about, I'm going to restore a pure language unto you. So he's, yes. he's talking about his language, his, yes. that Hebrew language that, that is his, you know, I think we study, we try to figure out, you know, but of course he's smarter than we are. Yes. yes. <laughs> he's got this on a level that we haven't reached yet. Right. His wisdom far supersedes what, what our understanding is. Looking into it. Right. But it's so simple, and yet it is so scriptural that it is profound. Yes. Really hard to even wrap our minds around. Yeah. So I'm going on with that sentence. Infrared light is the primary language of cell-to-cell -cell communication. What gives us the infrared light? A sound. Yeah. So yeah. fascinating things coming out of the cy cymatics research and be music as medicine. This isn't just sound therapy. He's very clear to differentiate between sound therapy, which always involves kind of a therapist, a counselor person giving directives, where music as medicine involves going straight to the frequency, straight to the music, straight to the things that are in the supernatural quantum realm that defy our understanding even the words. Right. So this kind of blows our minds because we've talked about sine waves and in, yeah. and in music 
uh, therapy and in studying music, you learn about sine waves and square waves and all the different kinds of waves. But cymatics has really discovered that it isn't in that kind of a waveform, but it's actually in more of an audible bubble. Wow. So these are sounds coming out of the violin, just playing on one string. And you can cut it in half and it goes all the way through. Wow. And isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. A cymoscope. Uh, they're just really enlarging what we talked about early on in this series with the Cladney plates and the video that Dr. Monzo showed when we opened up this series, the cymoscope stuff is really starting to get into deep level research and not just be the fascinating, isn't that beautiful thing. They're creating dances with this. They're creating um, uh, music, instrumental, vocal tracks with this. Of course, a lot of it is new agey. Right. So you have to be very careful and discerning, but we also can take back what this just gave credence to so much of what I do with my voice bios and creating pieces, beautiful pieces with scripture embedded with the low resonating frequencies in the keys that someone is needing in their frequency print, their voice print. It just gave a whole nother level of, um, confirmation and it's like, Lord, I, I don't, I don't, I can just get out of the way and right. let you be and let you do what you've put in place to do. And, and the result is a wow on behalf of the listener with the intention. Wow. Here's another one I thought was fascinating. These are all credited to the cymoscope.com site and John Stuart Reed. An example, so I don't, the, the, Copyright stuff is all there. It's on the screens. Example of a healthy sun, uh, cell is on the left. They take pictures of a cell called a cymoglyph, and it reveals the beautiful symmetry. It's visible now on the left, and everything's in harmony. This is when they're listening to something very beautiful and what a cell looks like. And then if you look on the right, it's dissonant. That's what a cancer cell looks like. It's skewed, it's chaotic, it's out of proportion. And just think about how much dissonant music is out there, people listening to. Oh yeah. And that's what it does to the cells. Oh yeah. So I thought that that would be an interesting thing to share too. It's always good to know uh, the good that the Lord is turning all these things too, because if we don't pay attention to it, the other stuff impacts us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's so important to, to, to pay attention to what we're allowing to come into our various gates, you know, ear gates, eye gates, Absolutely. you know, it's really important. It makes a difference. And this is this, this science proves that it makes a difference. It does. There's a tell, there's a reason he tells us to guard our hearts, yeah. to watch what we see, watch what we listen to, because the wellspring of life mm -hmm. is in that place. Yep. So going on, um, this one I just added from today. That's a picture of John Stuart Reed. Um, this was a um a portion of the module I was listening to. It's dealt with in much more depth later on. But I wanted to show it because we have so many people dealing with trauma. Mm -hmm. And traumatized cells can stay in an extended sleep state. And they call it the G0 phase or the quiescent phase, quiescent phase, sorry, for days and weeks or months. And then during this sleep state, the imbalance in the body is generically termed illness, or I call I like to call it dis-ease. Yeah. Sound in the form of a song or from a musical instrument or sound therapy device, like a tuning fork, can provide the stimulus needed to reawaken sleeping cells, the traumatized cells, by stimulating the cell's integral membrane proteins on the outer edge. So, so this, I have a question on this. Going back to, let's just say, we get, we get to a place where, you know, internet's down, 
you know, song things aren't working. Is this still, we can take this back to that stimulating our own vagus nerve to do this and activate this in our body, even if things aren't working the way that we've had them work in our world before? That is one avenue, but I do think we need to have access to uh, battery powered things that allow the lower resonating frequencies of beautiful music to still be a part of our atmosphere. I think that is very critical, especially those of us who are very impacted by beautiful music. It's a part of our DNA. It's a part of who we are. So we need to have backup systems to be able to keep doing that um, for cellular health, as well as, yes, our own voices with the okay. vagus nerve. Okay. The combination awesome. of things. Does that answer your question? It, it really does. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So this one I wanted to share because I've unpacked this a lot when I pray over my clients. But this one was um, shared on Easter Sunday by Jensen Franklin, and I'd never heard a few of the pieces because this is at the center of all of it. It's why we take communion. It's why we seek his presence and him as Jehovah Rapha, him as healer. He is the, 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 the paramount focus of all of what we're talking about. And we know that we know that we know he has made this available to us. So when I do communion, which I always do before I do clients, whenever I have intercession and whatnot, I've prayed through a lot of these things, but I wanted to highlight them because they were so significant. They got to the core of my innermost being. And I've prayed about the sweat drops of blood in the garden that Yeshua went when he was agonizing and the disciples were sleeping many times. And I do believe that is very specific to the trauma he knew he was going to endure emotionally and physically and mentally, that he agonized through that trauma on our behalf and on um, in Jensen's presentation of this, he said that the sweat drops of blood in the garden were for the healing of our will, our mm. desires and our wants in line with his desires and wants. And of course, I pray Psalm 37 for all the time in reverse, Lord, give me the desires of your heart. That's mm -hmm. what I want the desires of my heart to be. So I just thought that was just so... Um, poignant. I wanted to bring that in. And then his face, when they ripped his beard off, it was for the healing of our self-image. What a profound thing in this time of the whole confusion and the ideology and the propaganda. And yes. we need to be praying Psalm 139 over ourselves. We have been fearfully and wonderfully made, as well as the Genesis 1, that we were created in his image, both male and female. And when his beard was ripped off, that was for the healing of that peace. Wow. So, yes, that was just a so moving to me. And then the crown of thorns on his head, which we all know, for the healing of our minds. There's so many broken mentally and emotionally broken people right now. So much fear, so much depression, so much hopelessness. And he took that crown of thorns so that we could be free indeed by stepping into what he purchased with that crown of thorns. And yeah. then the back, we all know the stripes were for the healing that of our bodies, that by his stripes we are healed, that healing is the children's bread, that he's the name above every name, and that his word is above his name even, and his word never returns void. It always accomplishes what he sent it to do. So this is all so intricately connected to why we even take communion in remembrance of the healing that he purchased for each of us. And then the hand for the healing of our work because our work is spiritual so we can carry the cross into the secular marketplaces he wants us to use the work of our hands it matters what we do he has a mission a plan an assignment for each of us in our work and he took the piercings in his hands so that that healing could be ours mm -hmm. and the feet for the healing of our walks healing beyond the grief. So many people are dealing with tremendously deep grief, tremendous loss. The locusts have robbed much. 
stolen much. And he took the piercing in his feet so that whatever is behind us, whatever's over our head and whatever's behind us is under our feet. And he has given us the healing power to walk that out, period. Yeah, amen. And then the side, the blood and water. I love this for the lonely. I pray this with my intercessors all the time. There are so many people who have promises of soulmates that have not come to pass. And I pray all the time. He sets the lonely in families. It's not good for man to be alone. And it's, it's an assault of darkness against godly marriages and godly children and families. And I love that. Um, this was pointed out that the blood and water out of his side was for the lonely, for those very things that it's not good for man to be alone. We need spouses. We need families. It's for the healing of our fellowship and our marriages and our children and our grandchildren. And there is nothing that the blood of Jesus cannot restore. I love this line. He is the prince of pieces. When all you have left is broken pieces. And how many people have we come across in this chaotic, um, turbulent time with broken pieces. And you and I both know that journey intimately. And he is the Prince of Pieces to cleanse and heal it all. And I just love this unpacking. And I, I, I pray so much of this when I pray over my clients, but Jensen Franklin just confirmed so many things of what I prayed and added a couple points. And I wanted people to have access to this beautiful thing we remember when we take the bread in communion. That's so powerful, Tammy. I just, just want to add my own little story in here with this, you know, right if uh, I had done a piece of artwork, I do a lot of, um, Mixed media art, you know, I've got a piece sitting behind me that I did. I love that. And I do a lot with fabric and things. And at one point in my life, I felt so shattered by things that had happened throughout my life that I did this piece of artwork and I called it the shattered woman. Mm -hmm. and, and it was just pieces. The whole body was just pieces. And it was just you know, just pieces of fabric here and there and this blackness in between that the sh where the shattering had taken place. Mm -hmm. and, and it looked like it had been sewn together, but very roughly, you know, it wasn't really healed. It was just sewn together by these big black threads and it was just barely holding it together, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And when I did this piece, I mean, I agonized over this piece because that is how my soul felt Yes, you know, from, from the trauma. And so lately I did this piece, probably it's been about mm, 14 years ago that I did this piece. And so I've been through something recently that was just felt shattering. And I was worshiping to a song that you had sent me and somebody else had sent me the same song. It was by Rita Springer yeah. and it was Defender. Right. Yeah. And so I'm worshiping with all my heart and she's got a line in it about how he puts all of our pieces back together. And I just heard and felt the very presence of Yah telling me, yeah. don't you understand? I have put all your pieces back together. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be OK, you know, because I have healed you. You're yeah. not that shattered woman that you were before. Yes. That is where that was your past, but I have literally put all your shattered pieces back together. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. And, and so I just had to share that little testimony because this is absolutely true. He puts our pieces back together. Thank you. That was beautiful. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, sons and daughters of the most high are not Humpty Dumpties. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so Scripture exhorts us to search for him as for hidden treasure. Revelation is seeing with spiritual eyes and hearing with spiritual ears as an inner knowing. And that comes when we seek to know him intimately and personally. It doesn't come through another man, but rather through Holy Spirit awakening us to truth. The spirit of the Son of Man unveiling the Father's heart and will within us. Holy Spirit can use man to release revelation, and he does it all the time, even through those who do not know him. Mm -hmm. However, 
Revelation comes to us personally through Holy Spirit as he guides us into all truth. Mm -hmm. We're kind of getting into the wrap ups and I know there's a lot of things in here we know, but I want to decree them in this now time. It's a very succinct time for the ecclesia, the body to be in agreement with very scriptural truths and speaking them out loud because our sound matters. It does. Neither does anyone. This is very key to the issue we've got going on with quantum entanglement in the body all across the various uh, ministries and denominations and why we have such a messed up quantum realm right now. I think we talked about that last time. The quantum entanglement, am I, am I right? Or is I, did I just imagine that? No, I think that you are right. We did talk about that because I found it fascinating because another friend of mine had just been talking to me about that. And I was getting something, another piece of that from somewhere else. So it, it's such okay. a Kairos yeah. word at the moment. Amen. So this is very connected to that. Neither does any one individual receive the whole truth in its entirety. Why? Because we build towers of Babylon. Mm -hmm. We each mm -hmm. receive our piece of truth that is purposefully designed to fit together with other pieces of his truth, literally making up what scripture, scripture references as his body. Every one of us has a unique song written within our DNA that we alone were created to sing. Each song is intended to be sung in the context of the Father's orchestra that he is now assembling on the earth. Yes. Holy Spirit gave me the following revelation as an elaborate picture of his kingdom functioning together on the earth. Since I'm a musician, he revealed the analogy to me best through the language I speak best. The kings and priests he has made us to be, the sons of the Most High, comprise the individual notes of his master symphony, each being specifically placed and fit together in varying combinations for expressing his beautifully sonorous melodies and harmonies wherever he has placed us. The various instrumental sections in his orchestra are represented by his ecclesia with diverse kingdom assignments and callings dispersed throughout all the facets of cultures and nations. Each instrumental section must co-labor in conjunction with the rest of the orchestra, following the conductor's lead, who's the conductor, always Holy Spirit, in order for the complete symphony to resound on earth as he created and intended it to sound. This is a magnificent picture of his incredible masterpiece, Symphony Eternal, which has no end. It gloriously sounds forth throughout all eternity, and he intends it to sound on the earth in our eternal now, as it is in heaven. It is the new sound that we are all listening for. And I love Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who by faith have testified to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness, stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us, let us run with endurance and active persistence the race that is set before us, looking away from all that would distract us and focusing our eyes on Yeshua, the author and perfecter of our faith, the first incentive for our belief and the one who brings our faith to maturity, who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross, disregarding the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, revealing his deity, his authority and the completion of his work. Just consider and meditate on him who endured from sinners such bitter hostility against himself and consider all of it in comparison with your trials so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And I want to go back for a minute because in the orchestra, I think it's very critical right now. Your ministry is spot on, heart of the tribe, that you find your tribe. Who's the section you sit next to? Who's the section you sit with? 
on both sides, who do you set next to? Know the song you're called to play or sing. Always keeping your eyes on the Holy Spirit because the song that you are called to play and sing fits into the massive symphony that Father is releasing on earth. And it's such an intricate thing, just like these cymatics things, just like everything we've discussed up to this point. And I exhort you, I challenge you, I encourage you to find your section because Holy Spirit is always the conductor and he's always releasing the Father's song that he's singing over us in this now time. He is always releasing the ease, the energy and the sound expressed from the throne room into the disease, the dis-ease. The dis coming against that energy and sound expressed in you from the throne room. And it's so important to know your season and your assignment. And I want to go out of this for a minute. That's a teaser. <laughs> I want to come into this. I don't know if you have anything to interject. If no, I, I, I'm, I'm like... It's just going off in my mind. Things that you're confirming things for me that I've been praying about. <laughs> Well, does the master confirmer? He sure is. So I want to go into this because this is such a strategic thing for this now time. We're talking about the power of sound, the power of our words to bless and curse. That sound, let there be, the sound of our voices is what actually creates. And I mentioned this. Uh, that it, I was in a parking lot in, in Atlanta after a, a pretty traumatic season. And my son was in the post office mailing something. So it took a little bit and the Holy Spirit said, get out your phone and get out your notes, start typing. And he gave me this whole series of words. I mentioned this early on and I do have this in curriculum form, but I also put it in a video I put it in a song with my children's art and whatnot. And I really feel that these words are so critically important for each of us to be speaking, for each of us to be teaching our children because they carry that beautiful sound, that beautiful creating, the healing of the um, bringing, releasing the throne room into the dis-ease. So I wanted to go through this because these are all higher resonating frequencies. Every it's word he gave me. And this is in my curriculum. It's in my devotions and it's on my children's heart cry instrumental album. Um, Which is I, one of my favorites, Tammy. I, I absolutely love that one. Amen. It really ministers to me. All glory to him. I yeah. really that in 2017. I dedicated this to every child of every tongue, tribe, and nation of every generation that would they would intimately know Yeshua, Jesus Christ, as the way, the truth, and the life in the fullness of heaven, as their essence of their very eternal being, while searching out and living in the treasure of him on earth within each of us and on behalf of others. And then it's got the Proverbs, train up a child in the way he should go, because there is no greater joy than to know that your children and your grandchildren are walking with the Lord. And we're in a time of praying back the prodigals. There's so many prophecies about don't give up on your prodigals. There's a billion soul harvest coming and pray your prodigals back in. Don't give up. So, these are words that we should be releasing on behalf of this generation in this now time to impact the dis, dis ease and the chaos. So these are the words he gave me as I frantically typed in that parking lot in Atlanta on my phone in notes. The children's heart cry, teach me to intimately know the depths of my heavenly father's love and to know my eternal value. To know the incredible kingdom identity and purpose that Jesus Christ, Yeshua, purchased for me on the cross. The children's heart cry says, teach me to hear and know Holy Spirit's voice. To intimately know his word 
from the moment of my entry into this world to know my eternal purpose, calling, and destiny on earth as it is in heaven. The children's heart cry, teach me to love my heavenly father, my savior, myself, those who love me and those who do not. To be thankful, to honor. The children's heart cry, teach me to respect, to show mercy, to know compassion. The children's heart cry, teach me to be humble, to know justice. Oh, wow, the Holy Spirit is stirring it up all over again as I read through this. I'm sorry. You know that he's touched you deeply when the tears just come. And they're yep. tears of knowing this is his heart being released from the atmosphere, from the throne room, from the blood, the body, from the power that we have been grafted into, that we have um, been called to possess and release on earth. To know justice, we need justice. And to have justice, uh, mercy, triumph over judgment. And to know justice, to worship the Father's justice, his idea of justice. I need to stay on that one. Yeah. And to worship our Creator, our Father, our Savior, and Lord. That is our purpose our eternal purpose for existing. I love that there's children in all these because out of the lips of infants and children, he has ordained praise. Why? Because it silences the enemy at the gate. The children's heart cry, teach me to praise my creator, my father, my king, and my Lord. There's nothing more priceless when I see my little your old grandson raising his hand and just, he doesn't even have the words. He's just singing along with the worship songs and lifting his hands and he's so into it. And there's things happening in the spirit realm because of that, because that is the ways Christ demonstrated. Wow. To pray to the one who alone is the answer for everything and everyone. How did we get to this point in our journeys in this culture in his story yeshua is always the only answer yeah to live for our king and his kingdom from our entry into this life to the moment of our exit the children's heart cry teach me to be discerning to focus on the light therefore if light comes from sound we need to focus on the sound that releases the light. He mm -hmm. is the light. He is the sound. And it's in us. To speak life and blessings into ourselves and into all people and into all circumstances. The children's heart cry teach me to intimately know the one who purchased my destiny for his glory. Mm -hmm. To know my gifts to know and to use my gifts skillfully for the kingdom of heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. The children's heart cry, teach me to know my eternal purpose and my eternal calling, my eternal destiny. The children's heart cry, teach me while I am yet a young child to know his joy and to know his peace. It is so interesting that all these pictures he gave me to put this together are all young children. And there's been such an assault on the children. Yeah. Even in the past um, three years, especially, but even a few before that, yeah. there's been such a target on the young children. And this is why. Yeah. To know his joy, to know his peace, Righteousness, peace, and joy is what the kingdom is. Yeah. The children's heart cry, teach me to taste and see his goodness, his loving kindness. It's his loving kindness that leads to repentance. His patience, his long suffering. 
The children's heart cry, teach me his faithfulness and his gentleness, his unity. Mm -hmm. You can't be a symphony orchestra without unity in the Holy Spirit. The children's heart cry, teach me to see others through his eyes, mm -hmm. to know his wisdom, to know his counsel. These are the seven spirits that we talked about as we went through the Tuning Fork series. The children's heart cry to know his might, to hunger and thirst for his presence above all else, to know him as healer. The children's heart cry, teach me to walk in my sonship as the king and priest that Yeshua has made me to be as his daughter for such a time as this. To know him as our provider. The children's heart cry, teach me to know the one who satisfies my every need. That I may walk in the knowledge and the grace. The children's heart cry, teach me of the one who loves me first and most all the days of my life. And this one is from my own son who has really had a traumatized season. He's a David. He's a Davidic worshiper, a Davidic worshiper. He's skillful on his instrument. And there are a lot of those artisans under attack right now. So remember to pray for each and every one that they don't get isolated, that they don't succumb to the enemies aborting what the Lord is about to birth in them and through them to transform and bring the sound. I believe I'm one of those as well. Um, mm -hmm. Shell, I know you are as well. Um, my son got this when he was 17 years old. He used to play on his guitar, his bass. He's skillful on both bass and guitar. And he's very creative. And he got this in the wee hours of the morning and gifted it to me for Christmas. He's also skilled in graphic design. He designed this. And it says, what is faith? What does it mean to hope for things we can't see? What love has there ever been like the one demonstrated by a king whose splendor and riches are beyond imagination? What does it mean to trust in something so foreign to this world and yet have it affect our lives so intimately? What does it mean to have a purpose, a purpose that most men reject? What voice has ever been so strong that it formed the masses of molecules with a single word? And yet the same voice calls to me, nothing more than whispers, a single breath, the breath of a lion whose eyes burn like sapphires. Who is this king that rules over every moon? and star who is this king that knows every one of my thoughts every sliver that leads to my very being i've never felt a touch like this a touch with such passion devotion and sincerity it weakens me as i lift my head to face this king my very core is shaken with such power overwhelmed with emotion as my eyes meet his as my eyes meet the first and the last, the lion of the tribe of Judah, my eternal king, Jaden Sorensen. Wow. Kind of a wow. Yeah. Incredibly a beautiful. <laughs> it hangs on my wall too, but I wanted to share it. So in light of that one, those were a lot of words, and I unpacked all of them in my curriculums. I, uh, the children's heart cry, I'm about ready to release my I Am Sound, which has sound therapy strategics and um, specific details for sound therapy sessions with the tuning forks with some of my albums. Um, I'm about to release that in May or June. I've got my husband, my son working on my cover. Everything else is ready to be released. And um, in unpacking my children's heart cry, every one of those pages was unpacked in activities as well as devotions. Right. And 
So um, I just wanted to share that because they're all life-giving. They're all higher resonating frequencies that set us free from yeah. these lower resin resonating, diseased, inflammation-causing frequencies. And so my next adventure is this, and I'm not going to go into it in profound detail. I just want to do a little teaser. Um, I told you that I did a um, chart for Dr. Robin Perry Braun back in 2021, specific to all of my albums and the different frequencies of the songs that go with different diseases and body parts and whatnot. And when I got all done, I needed a title for it to copyright it. And I went for a walk and the Holy Spirit said, you already know what the title for this is. You've been waiting because it's been prophesied a number of times. You have had the acronym prophesied a number of times since 2011. So you know what the title is. And the acronym was EASE. Yes. And he unpacked it as energy and sound expressed. So that is what I named the chart. It's my EASE chart. It's why I use EASE in a lot of my album titles. Their specific ease, energy, and sound expressed albums. And I'm going to be um, unpacking some things about this specifically for releasing ease into the dis ease. I um, put some definitions that are related to scripture in this. I love Isaiah 61, 1 through 6, because this is our purpose. The mighty spirit of the Lord Yahweh is wrapped around me. Because Yahweh has anointed us as messengers to preach oh. news to the poor. He has sent us to heal the brokenhearted and to tell those in captive. I had a dream last night about many people in captivity. You are free from your darkness. We are sent to announce a season of Yahweh's grace and a time of God's recompense on his enemies, which mm -hmm. are all powers, principalities, rulers, and authorities in high places to comfort all those who are in sorrow, to strengthen those who are crushed by despair, who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful bouquet in the place of ashes, the oil of bliss instead of tears, and the mantle of joyous praise instead of the spirit of heaviness. Because of this, they will be known as mighty oaks of righteousness. That's how he sees us, planted by Yahweh as a living display of his glory. We will restore the ruins from long ago and rebuild what was long devastated and renew the ruined cities and desolations of past generations and be known as priests of Yahweh and servants of our God. I love that passage. So do I. I'm so glad that you, is this the amplified version? That is either amplified or passion. Or passion. What, what I'm really glad, whichever one it is, that you used it because it's just is beautiful and it needed that expounding at. Yes. It, yeah. Yep. I love it. Love it. Love it. And it is a now word to yeah. be released and prayed in. It has everything to do with what I just went through in the children's heart cry. Yes. All the things we've talked about in this series with trauma and where all of those emotions are stored and what's coming, all of that where we are going to see the best and the worst of times. His glory is going to rise and shine on us in the midst of this deep darkness covering the earth. Speaking yeah. of darkness today. <laughs> in so I want to just expound a little more. Make um, To make something unpleasant, painful, or intense, less serious or severe. That's what ease does. It's the absence of difficulty of effort. And it's to move carefully or gradually. So the ease has a number of things to be unpacked in correlation to this scripture. Yeah. And then the energy. I unpacked this one from a scripture. I'm pretty sure the last one is the passion. And I just forgot to write it on there. Because this one's the passion. From Hebrews 4.12. For we have the living word of God, which is full of energy like a two-mouthed sword. It will even penetrate to the very core of our being where soul and spirit, bone and marrow meet. 
It interprets and reveals the true thoughts and secret motives of our hearts. And we are truly walking through a time of that, where yes. the true thoughts and motives that need to be left behind are being severed. And it's painful. Pruning is painful. Uh, transition is painful, but we're in the midst of it. And energy means activity. We all know that E equals MC squared, where mass times the speed of light squared. It's the capacity of physical system to do work. Didn't we talk about he healed our work? That light and sound are both work and what we speak so that it is activating the light. That is work, our intention. It takes intention to deal with the things that are coming against us from a way that is focused on his higher resonating frequencies, his goodness, what he's made available, his energy, his song, his purpose. And we need to be anchored in that so that what's coming out of us is a sound that produces light that releases ease, energy, and sound into the dis-ease. You know, I just... I kind of had a practical maybe experience of some of this today. You had brought up the, the scripture about the great cloud of witnesses. Yep. So in my prayer time today, you know, one of the things that I started praying is father put within me actions and words that will cause the cloud of witnesses to cheer me on. Amen. Because it's pleasing to you. Amen. And it's in line with you. Yes. And you're not only um, coming in alignment with that, but you're converging with all of their prayers, with all of their life's work that brought him glory. We're in a converging season of all of this. And we're entering into that convergence. Yeah, that was a, a, a word convergence was the word when I did a show last Thursday, I think it was last Thursday with um, Carrie Brown. Yes. And it was either Tuesday or Thursday. I can't remember. And, um, and that was the word that y'all had given, given me. It was, we're in a time of convergence. Spot on here. And yeah. so spot on. I love it. Love it. Love it. So here's unpacking the acronym, another level energy and sound. Jeremiah 23, 29 is not, this keeps coming up. The Lord keeps bringing this up in this now time, even though it was prophesied and prayed years back. Is not my word like a fire that consumes all that cannot endure the test, says the Lord, and like a hammer, piano keys, tuning forks that break the most stubborn rock into pieces. I've shared that vision in this series of just breaking up the granite. And I think I shared last time too about my intercessor group where my screen went black and the, the sparkles, the fireworks just went off. Did I share that? Oh, I can't remember, Tammy. <laughs> well, we were in prayer a couple of weeks ago and my, as we were uh, kind of even entering into this verse, the screen where they saw me went black and all these spectacular colors just exploded in the back. And then it turned back to me normal with the screen. Wow. <laughs> it was a wow. They just said, wow, what was that? That was a supernatural manifest of manifestation of Jeremiah 23, 29. Stay the course, Tammy. This is on par for what I've got for you on the course ahead, no matter what is trying to keep you distracted back here or over here or the sickness. I fought COVID for two weeks. All those things, he was saying, nope, keep pressing forward, keep pressing forward. It's the Jeremiah 23, 29 time where you're going to strike a little light little tap in the granite that has been blocking the sky as far as you can see is going to explode into the most glorious colors and sounds we've ever witnessed. And so I'm taking him at his word, and that's why we're meeting again today. Yes. <laughs> So the sound vibrations that travel through air or another medium and can be heard when they reach a person or an animal's ears. Sound is produced by continuous and regular vibrations as opposed to noise. Noise is dis-ease. 
Dissonance is disease. Music, speech, and sound effects when they're recorded can be used to accompany a film or video production or broadcast. The ideas or impressions conveyed by words, what have we been talking about for the last several slides? To emit or cause to emit a sound, which will then turn into light, or to convey a specified impression when heard. All of that is sound unpacked. Mm. Light, because sound creates light. Matthew 5, 14 through 16, your lives light up the world. For how can you hide a city that stands on a hilltop and who would light a lamp and then hide it in an obscure place? Instead, it's a place where everyone in the house can benefit from its light. So don't hide your light. That's why we're doing this program, yeah. this series. Let it shine brightly before others so that your commendable works will shine as light upon them, and then they will give their praise to your Father in heaven, the whole purpose. So light is the natural agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. An expression in someone else's eye, in someone's eyes indicating a particular emotion or mood, the aha. Uh -huh. Understanding of a problem or mystery, enlightenment, more aha. An area of something that is brighter or paler than its surroundings. Provide with lighter lighting to illuminate. I believe Yah is illuminating a lot of things and we just need to spend time and be opening to the illumination. Yeah. Something start burning or igniting. We know revival has started, that there yeah. are fires burning. I read the most amazing testimony of 7,000 in the University of Georgia where that nursing student was killed. And so many gave their hearts to Jesus that they were baptizing students in the parking lot in the back of pickup trucks. Wow. God, wow. praise Yah, praise Yah. Yeah. So energy and sound, which creates light, which he is light. We are called to be the sound and light expressed. Where does that part come from? Philippians 4, 8. Keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind, and fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him, praising him always, because yeah. that is what becomes expressed out of our innermost being. This verse, this verse is like a life verse for me because I had, I was steeped in so much darkness. And this is one of the first ones I have carried this around in my pocket on yeah pieces of paper, cards. I, I've I've taken so many opportunities to escape into a private bathroom and pull it out and read it when I was struggling, you know, to get my mind to conform to his will for me. It, it, this is a powerful, powerful verse. And we have to be intentional about it. It isn't going to be easy. No, it's With not easy. Stuff coming against us, we have to do exactly what you said. And that's why it's there for us to press yeah. on towards the prize of what's been made available. Yeah. So being expressed is conveying a thought or feeling in words or by gesture and conduct to squeeze it out, liquid or air, to cause an inherited characteristic or gene to appear in a phenotype. Mm. Releasing higher resonating, Philippians 4, 8, oils, oils, holistic tunings, just an FYI. I have a, a holistic friend who has made me a frequency in every one of the tuning fork sessions that I do. And I always put it on. I put it on before I taught today. Yeah. I love, I also have um, her. That is the I sense of thing. Thing. my friend Nita made it, this one encounter the King. And I never do a presentation yeah. with anointing my feet with we, encounter the King. Yes. So tap into your holistic frequency, uh, aromatherapy, apocotherapy, people who live for the kingdom because they have a revelation we need in this now time. Also, the Theon designs. Um, I always wear the higher resonating. I've got my pendant on. I've got my ear cuffs on. I've got, um, I have a um, Bible imprinted, the entire Bible imprinted in this necklace. Wow. Um, they aren't religious rituals to me. I know they are filled with Holy Spirit revelation. 
and higher resonating frequencies. Um, I have a Theon Design bracelet as well. And these people are spirit-filled, word-filled. They've gotten their piece of the orchestra revelation. And we need to come together and, and apply what they've um, been revealing with their piece in the same way with the tuning forks, in the same way with my instrumental music, because they all matter in this now time. Yes. He's releasing the holistic tunings and settings and our thoughts and our emotions and our words and our actions into the lower resonating frequencies of unforgiveness, offense, negativity, division, rejection, and I could go on and on with betrayal, lies, deception, delusion. There's so much of that all around us in the natural realm that we have to be extremely intentional about using all the tools that he's made available for us to take our thoughts captive with his word, to make our words align with his word. And then all these extra things that music as medicine is quantum biology is revealing that there is quantum science behind all of this. So do not let it sit stagnant, but apply it to cause all this to come into alignment. Because even in my module, I listened to this morning with music as medicine. He had, I didn't put this slide on there, but he had a slide of all these mo water molecules and they were all different sizes. Some were small, some were smaller, but there were two larger ones in there. And then they fed it the cymoscope and the cymoscope made these two beautiful patterns on the larger ones. And it caused all the smaller ones to be in movement, but they didn't get the pattern. Why? because of the quantum law of resonance. The strongest resonating frequency in any atmosphere causes all the lesser ones to have to come into alignment. Right. And if they don't, they have to go away. Mm. So we need to be those vessels of him using us in these higher resonating frequencies. So that is the releasing ease into the disease acronym of energy and sound expressed ease energy sound light expressed and knowing the season that we're in my husband and i are going to be starting this fall maybe even this summer some very strategic ease presence it's all about his presence this isn't just about the science. It's about bringing him glory. It's about Holy Spirit presence. And then he can use all the science because it's his. He's, right. he's just taking it back. He created it to um, bring it into encounters where not just one individual can be impacted, but massive groups, whether it's three, whether it's 10, whether it's 30, whether it's a hundred, whether it's thousands. And we're actually going to do the whole sound and light um, patterns because the color chroma therapy will respond to the music frequencies. We've done it before. And if you're not tuned into it and not taught about these things, you can be kind of distracted by the color therapy, the chroma therapy. But the color will respond to the the instrumental frequencies. It's wow. beautiful and glorious. It is. And it's all about his presence. It activates the fivefold. It activates, I know that he's going to bring he who the sun sets free is free indeed to manifest on behalf of the, the broken, the needy. And that's why we're here for such a time as this. Absolutely incredible. So many things to still look forward to. To search out. Yes. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's this has been such a fantastic series. And you know, I am I'm looking forward to what y'all may have us do yet still in the future with all the all the areas that you're going into with the with the um the light and the color and just incredible. Amen. I just thought he brought a really succinct wrap up. I think so. With also giving us some teasers for the new things that are yet to come. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we did have one question up here from Bethany. Let me put this up. She had said, talking about the sun, can you talk about 
RLT or red light therapy healing, it has to do with the sun. Do you In know any red light therapy is good for you? It's healthy. Yes. And you have to there as with everything, everything is in moderation. You have to know you have to know what you're using and how long to use it. But infrared light therapy is very healing. Wonderful. And we need those rays. Those rays yeah. do come from the sunrise and the sunset. And then through the 10 to 2, where we're always told to cover up with sunscreen and stay out. If right. you stay out for 20 to 50 minutes you're only going to get the beneficial ones. And remember, you can't get them through windows. Right, right. Yeah, no, since since you did that presentation, I've been a lot more um, conscious about my effort to walk outside, walk on the grass, you know, take my shoes off, walk around and get a little bit of sunshine. And Amen, know. amen. Yeah. Now, I have to rest Bethany's before we close out today. Do you have any more to say on the infrared? I don't. The very first one up and my heart goes out and I don't want to address it from that standpoint. I'm an intercessor and I have prayed for the children of the nations in the 1040 window, the broken, the impoverished, the sick, those who don't get education, those who are abused and traffic captive for war things. This isn't just going on in one facet of news media. I no. have been operation world since my kids were little and taught them to pray through the 1040 window because of this. When um, Stacy and Wes Campbell and Stephen Court came out with the book, Be a Hero in the early 2000s. Oh my gosh, it rocked my world. If you haven't read that book, Oh my gosh, it's, it's on the de the seven deadly sins that are going on worldwide. This is right. not restricted to what the media wants us to see as one group being affected. It's in right. every tongue, tribe, and nation, but there are some very severe ones in Africa and in the 1040 window in Malaysia. And there have been such horrific... Um, some of the stuff I can't even talk about it. It will break your heart to read right. this book. But if you have not read the book, you need to know because those things have not reconciled. They have not gone away just because that book came out in 2001. It's still available. It's why I have spent, it's why I adopted three children from Guatemala, three sibling groups, five or three children from a sibling group, five, eight, and 10 at the time and blended them into our already twin nine-year-olds and 12. And that was not an easy journey. It will cost you a lot. Um, but when he asks you to do it and he confirms it, you need to follow through and he's at work turning it all to good, no matter how it looks right now. Right. But I have two girls who are major impactful for the kingdom that wouldn't be if they had been left in that orphanage. Okay. And um, what I want to say is how people use infants in the womb, fresh out of the womb, what's going on. We talked about India, the toddlers. There are things that are going on that I have been in intercession for for decades, and mm -hmm. I still am. There, every group, every week, my intercessor group, we meet twice a week and we ask Lord Sabaot to command the angel armies on their assignments. Not one should sit idle. Let every single angel find every one of those children because they know where they are and they need supernatural intervention. They need supernatural protection, provision, rescuing. They need the body of Christ to stand up and be a voice. I've always said that if every person who professed Jesus Christ, professed kingdom, uh, all of these things, if, they, if everyone would just take one child and yes, it's going to wreck your world. It's going to rock your world. It's going to bless your world. There wouldn't be any orphans. There wouldn't be any abandoned, rejected children. So I don't want the media to impact this because I showed that. I showed every tongue and tribe from many right. nations, including the two that are at war in the Middle East, the two that are at war in Europe. It's all over our borders what's happening at our border. And we have lost 85,000 plus children where no one knows where they are. Right. 
we've got to care about these things, people. And you just hit my passion button. I bleed for the children. I didn't do what Jesus did, but my heart bleeds and groans. I don't have words many times for the intercession that these kids need. And everyone needs to pick up this mantle. Everyone. Absolutely. Tammy, give us the name of the book that you were recommending again. I could go get it off my bookshelf. It's called Be a Hero. And Be it's a hero. And it's by Stephen S T E P H E N Court and Wes Campbell. And Wesley and Stacy Campbell have a Be a Hero ministry that you can get behind and support. Heidi Baker has Iris Ministries you can get behind and support in Haiti, Children of the Promise. They take care of so many of these HIV babies. And I know Haiti's in horrendous turmoil. So pray for the people in Haiti who Children of the Promise, they're taking care of tons of severely damaged children. And there's other people that I've seen that it is in a mess. We need to be praying for the children of Haiti. And then... Um, Mexico. I have Feed My Sheep Ministries. I in Belize. I've got um, Treasure Ministries. I know so many people one on one. I've worked with some of Heidi Baker's ministries. I know another gal that I can't even talk about where she is because it's such a dangerous thing. But she takes care of Middle Eastern babies who are on uh, very th life threatening things. And I just put out a share on my Facebook to raise money. They needed a life threatening, a life saving device that before they could even travel with her. And I have created music that she has used for babies to usher back into the presence of the father to uh, see them through some very horrific surgeries. I mean, I can go on for hours on this people. This is my heartbeat because I've been called to care about these things, but we all have, this isn't just me. It's why I've written the children's heart cry. It's why I've written the I am sound therapy curriculum that's coming out. It's why I work with broken people, hurting people. So yeah, you just hit a button with that little post. <laughs> I want to read this. I want to read this. This is Isaiah 54. It says, sing, O barren, you that did not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, aloud, you that did not travail with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says Yahweh. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of your habitations. Spare not, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes, for you shall break forth on the right hand and on the left, and your seed shall inherit the other nations and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for you shall not be ashamed, neither be confounded, for you shall not be put to shame, for you shall forget the shame of your youth and shall not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. For your maker is your husband, Yahweh Zavaot is his name, and your redeemer, the Holy One of Yasharel, the Elohai of the whole earth, shall he be called. Do you know, it is so fitting that you would conclude with that. I have an essential oil from my friend in Australia, that's Isaiah 54. And the first time that the Lord burned that in my spirit, I was sitting on a runway in Guatemala City with three children who did not speak English and who had never been out of the country and who did not remember their birth families very much, just the birth or the, the abuse, mm. had lived in an orphanage for five years. And I said, what would you say to me, Lord? Because I was going home with two kids who thought, what are my mom and dad doing? Twins, nine and a 12-year-old. And um, he just burned and etched that in my spirit on the runway. And that was 2002 the week wow. before Thanksgiving, and it's never left. I just picked up the mantle and run with it even harder. Yeah. So it's very fitting that you would close out our um, series that we've been doing since January with yeah. that scripture, because I know you got that one too. Yeah, I did. 
So we're sisters by Isaiah 54 in That's a whole right. new way. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Oh, well, th I just want to say thank you, Tammy. Thank you so much for doing this. I can't wait to see what y'all has for us next. Amen. And I want to thank you for inviting me, for giving me the open door, the window, the freedom, all of this, because that was a gift in of itself to me. Oh, well, I, I'm thank you. I, I appreciate that. And it's just been my honor. It's just absolutely been my honor. Mine too. Blessed. Oh. Bless and blessings to everyone who's joined us and, and been with us through this series, whether you're able to watch it uh, live or in the future. Today is April the 8th of 2024 as we're finishing up and we pray that this is a blessing to you. Amen. For now, we're going to say shalom. 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 Mm -hmm.